Hey there, Angular folks, and welcome back. AI suggestion text boxes are everywhere right now. Recently, I added one to an Angular app with signal forms. Here's how I did it. Here we have a basic form to create a product listing. We can add a title for our product, and then we can add a description. This is just a plain text area. Five years ago, this would have been great. Today, we have AI, so we can do better. We're gonna change this. We're going to create a custom form control that takes the text entered, builds a prompt, and passes it off to a third-party LLM to help us write better product descriptions. Let's switch over to the code and get started. In this app, we have both a client and a server. For the purposes of this demo, we won't really be concerned with the server. The Angular app lives in the client directory. In this app, I've already created an AI suggest field component. Inside of this component, we have an AI suggest service. This is the place where the Angular app talks to our backend. It uses fetch to call the suggest API, passing some text that will then be used to build a prompt and send off to the model. This abort signal is important. It lets us cancel requests if the user keeps typing. We'll see more on this in a moment. This tutorial uses a real LLM. You can clone this repo, add your own API key, and run it locally. In the server app, let's open up the environment config. Here you can see we're using Grok. You can pretty easily switch this out if you wanted to use a different model with this app, but Grok is pretty generous with their free requests. So that's why we're using it here. To use it, you just need to go to their website and create a free account. Once you have your account, you can click the API keys link at the top. And then you just need to create an API key and then copy it and paste it back in the environment config. Once you have your key, all you need to do is run the app, which you can do with this command. At this point, the app should be up and running for you. So let's go ahead and wire up our custom control. Okay, here's the code that we're starting with in the AI suggest field component. We can see right here that it's implementing the form value control interface, which makes it a custom control in Angular signal forms. Then we have a label and placeholder input, which are not related to signal forms, just used to pass labeling to the UI. Then we have the value model signal, which is required by the form value control interface. This is used to store the actual value of the control. Then we have the touched model, which represents the touch status of this control from an Angular Forms perspective. After this, we have a status signal. The purpose of this will be to represent the communication status with our backend and language model. It can be idle, loading, ready, or error. Then we have a suggestion signal. This will be used to store the suggestion value we get back from the AI. So this component is going to behave like a normal form control with an AI preview layer. First thing we need to do is add an abort controller property and we'll initialize it to null. This lets us cancel in-flight requests. If the user types again, we don't want stale AI responses popping in later. Next, let's add a helper method to reset the abort controller. First, we'll call abort on the controller and then we'll reset it to null. Now let's add a helper method to reset the status to idle. First, we'll set our status signal to idle, and then we'll clear out the AI suggestion signal. This just gives us a clean deterministic reset helper. Next, we need to respond to typing. Let's add an onInput method with an event parameter. Then let's create a variable to store the value of the underlying text area control. Then we'll set our control value model signal to this value. This will now work just like a normal input. As the user types, the form control value will be updated. 
Next, let's handle the touched state. We'll want the control to be marked as touched as soon as the user focuses and then blurs out of the field. Let's create an onBlur method. And within this, let's set our touched signal to true. That lets signal forms know the user interacted with this field. Okay, now let's switch over to the template. Here, we'll use an input event to wire up our onInput function, passing along the actual event to update the value as the user types. Next, we will use a blur event binding to call our onBlur method to mark the control as touched. Okay, that wires up the basic text area control functionality, but while we're here in the template, I can go ahead and point out a couple of other things. First, here we have our AI suggestion button. We just need to wire this up. And if we scroll down, here we can see we have a suggestion panel region. If we get a suggestion back from the AI, this is where it will render. Also, while we're waiting for a response, we'll get a message that says thinking. Once we have the suggestion, we'll display it. If we have an error, we'll let the user know. And then when we have a valid suggestion, there is an accept button that also needs to be wired up so the user can accept the AI suggestion as their description. So the UI is already prepared. We just haven't wired the behavior yet. Let's switch back to the TypeScript and create this logic. First, we need to inject our AI suggest service. Now let's create a function to request the suggestion. In this function, the first thing we'll do is set the abort controller. Also, we'll set our status signal to loading so we can update the UI appropriately. Then let's add a try catch. We'll first use our AI service to create a response variable. We'll pass this the value of our text area. And then we'll pass the abort controller signal. This will allow us to cancel the HTTP request if needed. Next, we'll check to see if we have an actual suggestion. If we do, we'll set the value of our suggestion signal to the value from the response, and we'll update our status to ready. And if we don't get a response, we'll reset our status using the reset to idle function. Now, let's handle errors. First, let's handle our manual abort. If we trigger canceling the request, we'll simply return because it's not truly an error. If we didn't abort, we need to set the status signal to error so that we can properly update the UI. We also need to clear out the suggestion signal. And after our try catch runs, we'll set the abort controller to null to clean it up. Okay, this should handle getting a suggestion from AI. Now, we need to create a method to actually call this from our submit button. Let's add a submit request function. Inside this, the first thing we'll need to do is cancel any pending operations so that we don't get a stale value and then immediately update it with our new value. Then we'll call our new request suggestion and pass it the current value. Okay, now let's add an accept function for our accept button. When we accept the suggestion from AI, we need to set the value of the control to the value of the suggestion. Then we can reset our status to idle. Okay, now the last thing we need to do here is ensure that our submit button is disabled while we're fetching the suggestion from AI. To do this, let's add an is submit disabled property using a computed signal based on the loading status of our status signal. When our status is loading, 
the Submit button will be disabled. OK, that should be everything we need here. Now let's switch over to the template and wire it all up. The first thing we'll do is use a click event on our AI suggestion button, and then we will call our submit request function. Then we'll add a disabled attribute binding with the is submit disabled computed signal. So when a user clicks this button, we'll submit the request to the AI and we'll disable it while it's processing. Okay, now let's wire up the accept button. For this, we'll use a click event binding again, and this time we'll call our accept method. So now when we have a suggestion and the user clicks to accept it, it will update the value of the text area based on the value from AI. Okay, this component should be ready to use. So let's switch over to the form and wire it up. First thing we need to do is add this component in the imports array so that we can use it in the template. Okay, now we're ready to use it. So let's switch over to the template and add it. So we add the component. Then we add a label and a placeholder. For these, we'll just copy what was on the text area. And then, since this is a custom control, we can simply use the field directive to bind to the description control from the form. And that's it. All that's left is to remove the old text area and the rest of the markup around it because we no longer need this. All right, this should be everything that we need, so let's save and check it out. All right, everything looks the same to start, right? But there is one little difference. We now have this button in the corner of our text area. Let's add a product title. Then we can add part of our description. Here we can see the current value that we entered into the description text box. Now let's submit it off to Grok. Here we can see the status changes to thinking. That's pretty cool. And then, boom, an AI suggestion appears. This is pretty cool. This is a good description. I think we'll keep it. Let's click accept. Nice. So the text area value updated just like we want it to. Also, the form value updated as well. So this is a pretty cool feature that instantly makes your app feel modern in today's AI world. And it really doesn't take too much effort to add. On top of it all, I feel like Signal Forms makes it even easier to implement than it would have in the past. So, by wrapping this in a Signal Forms control, we keep the form as the single source of truth, and we turn AI autocomplete into a shippable production grade pattern. The result is something that feels professional. AI helps, the user stays in control, and the UI never surprises them. If you enjoyed this, be sure to like and subscribe for more AI and Signal Forms tutorials. And hey, if you want to represent Angular in the real world, check out the Shieldworks gear linked below. It's built for developers who treat their work like a real craft. All right, that's all for today. See you in the next one.